Today we're going to talk about how students taking the SAT with extra time accommodations uh, can use their time wisely on the math sections of the SAT exam. Alexis Avila here at our office in Wellesley, Massachusetts. For questions or tutoring in person or online, visit us preppedandpolished.com or call 781-753-9951. And remember, if you find value watching this video, smash that like button and click the subscribe button or click the bell to get notifications for new videos. Now we're gonna be talking about timing accommodations for the SAT math section for students who uh, have extra time, either time and a half or double time. Now for the second half of the test, the math side of the test, this is where our approach is going to defer quite a bit from the first half. Now, when we get into the math no calculator uh, section and the math calculator section, we are going to now be dealing with more flexible timing for questions, as well as trying to work out what question types and what topics make the most sense for the student to focus in on. Now, when we look at the math no calculator section, standard time is 25 minutes. So time and a half bumps that up to 37 and a half or 38 minutes for 20 questions. Now, unlike the reading and writing language section, the math sections of the test are really individual questions. Sometimes there's two or three questions paired together that usually happens, that usually happens on the calculator section. But now we're looking at each question on the test as, as its own individual, um, we'll say passage. But there are two categories of questions. There's multiple choice questions, which on the math no calculator section include 15 uh, multiple choice questions. And then there are student response questions or as I call them, fill in questions. And those are five on the no calculator section. So how I approach the time breakdown on how students should focus uh, in on their time is based on those two sections, the multiple choice and the fill in uh, questions. So if we look at 37 and a half minutes, you'll have roughly about 25 minutes for the multiple choice questions. And then 13 minutes roughly for the fill in questions. Now, this is what I call a standard for the time and a half structure, but every student has their own unique approaches. So we're gonna be taking those time frames, frames and adjusting them as necessary. Some students might need less time for the multiple choice questions and require more time for the fill-ins or vice versa. So what we wanna try and do is for the fill-in questions, guarantee yourself at least one minute, if not two minutes for each question on the test. Now, when looking at certain questions, we want to make sure that uh, as we're reading uh, the math questions, we're able to break down what the question is. Literally, not only what are they asking me to do, but also the topic of the question. Identify what we need to, to know, so then that way we can answer these questions. Now, a lot of times with the SAT math section, the phrasing of the questions ends up being the most challenging part, and it's not always the math. The math can always be challenging. Calculation errors can occur, but a lot of times it comes down to the student understanding uh, what he or she is being asked to do. So I always tell students to underline what the question is asking. If you have this extra time, make a note of what the question is asking. Then if it's multiple choice, note the answer choices. Take a look at them. See if any of the answer choices can give you an idea, uh, an inkling of where you're supposed to go with the information. Another thing to do is write down your work. You have extra time, show your work. You don't wanna make simple errors in your mind because you're trying to do it all in your head. Now, sometimes writing it out can help organize your thoughts better. And then also look at the answer choices to see which one of my answer choices is falling in step with what I'm doing here. A lot of times too, when we're dealing with multiple choice, we can 
deal with the answer choices by testing out some of the answer choices. So for example, if I'm trying to solve uh, for X, I might be able to look at my answer choices and say like, oh well, answer choice B says X is five. Well, let me try out five, see if it works. And if it works, then you just found the answer. If it doesn't work, okay, you get rid of it. For the math uh, calculator section now, the standard time is 55 minutes, it's a much longer section. But now it's even longer because with the extra time bump, with time and a half, you get 83 minutes. And 83 and a half minutes bumped up to 84 minutes. Similar approach here is gonna go for the calculator section as we are going into, as going into the no calculator section. In this instance, I recommend a base of starting off uh, of 64 minutes for the multiple choice questions, which enables us about 20 minutes for the fill-in questions. Now the multiple choice questions are gonna total up to 30, so 64 minutes is a nice way to have two minutes per question. And then 20 minutes for the fill-in questions, there's only eight, uh, so you know it's a little bit more than two minutes per question. That allows us a little bit of flexibility if we need more time for the multiple choice questions or if we need more time for the fill-in questions. Again, a lot of the same rules and approaches for the no calculator section are applicable to the calculator section. The only difference is how we use our calculator. So when we're using our uh, calculator, what I recommend for students is to be familiar with how they utilize the calculator for questions so that they're not trying to figure out how to use the calculator come the day of the test. And when you're working with us at Prepped and Polish, we're gonna go over a lot of strategies, a lot of shortcuts on the calculator and how to best utilize it so that we can maneuver our way through those questions that require uh, you know, use of the calculator versus questions that look like they uh, might need the calculator, but we can solve through either logical reasoning or simple rules of mathematical terms and topics. For the math section, I'll just say this one final thing uh, for both sections, the no calculator and the calculator, calculator section. Do have, uh, they do have an order of increasing difficulty from question one onward. The only difference compared to the ACT, which is question one through 60, increase is increasing order of difficulty. The SAT math no calculator section is from question one to 15, which is the multiple choice. Then it resets in terms of difficulty for sex 16 through 20, AKA the fill in sections. Same goes for the calculator, calculator, the calculator section. This section is one through 30, increasing order of difficulty. Then number 31 through 38 resets in order of difficulty. So in terms of question prioritization and time allocation, more time might be given for the beginning questions for each subsection so the student can at least answer those easier questions or more foundational questions first than those harder tiered questions. Now remember, if you get double time for the SAT, well, we're looking at standard time for the math no calculator of 25 minutes goes to 50 minutes. And then on the math calculator standard time, you go from 55 minutes to 110 minutes. So that's gonna be a lot of time for each section of the test. Now, as we've gone through the entirety of time and a half for each section of the test and this last little bit of double time, I want you all to know that if you have questions uh, or further inquiries about the SAT in terms of time and a half, in terms of double time, what works best for my student, please feel free to reach out to us, uh, prepped and polished, go to preppedandpolished.com. We'd be happy to schedule a call or a meeting to figure out what works best for your student based on their time accommodations and, and what they struggle with or excel in for each section of the test. Now, last thing to point out is if we're dealing with time and a half uh, or double time, Please make sure that your SAT has documentation of that time and a half and or double time. So this might require a little bit of legwork on getting up to your up-to-date neuropsych reports or having the school that your student attends submit the information to the college board uh, well in advance of the test. 
Usually what we recommend is if a student is taking a test uh, in the fall to try, uh, then you want to try and submit those accommodations uh, the summer before. If taking the test in the spring, well then submit those accommodations in the fall or the winter. We just want to make sure that uh, those time accommodations are in and we don't have to worry about getting them uh, or running into an issue where a student takes a test without the extended time and then tries to apply for extended time after ta having taken the SAT. But again, if you have any questions uh, about this test taking process uh, with extended time, please feel free to reach out to us at preppedandpolished.com. We'd be happy to answer any of your questions and try to find the best fit tutor, uh, the best fit structure, for your student. So good luck on the SAT exam and I'll talk to you soon.